All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled, Be the Proof That the Most High Exists. Now, I got inspired to do this lesson because I was on uh, social media and a brother posted, uh, you know, he uh, posted a post and, uh, you know, it's pretty much talking about, you know, supporting each other and everything like that. But in his caption, it said, be the proof that the most high exists. And, you know, when I read that, you know, I instantly started just going to the spirit and, uh, and I was just like, hey, man, that's exactly what we're supposed to do because, you know, you have a lot of unbelievers out here. You have a lot of scoffers, you know, atheists <laughs> and everything like that, man. And when you come into this truth, you're supposed to be proof that our Lord and our power exists. All right. We're supposed to go out there and make our bodies a living sacrifice so we can show our spirit. We can show uh, our light that the Most High has given us, you know, because, you know, without us going out into the highways and the byways and uploading these videos and everything like that, man, you know, the Most High will pretty much be dead to the world, all right? And, um, you know, for a lot of people, a lot of people believe in false gods as well, you know? They believe in false gods. They believe, they believe in Caesar Borgia, which is uh, the dude that posed for the uh, painting of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is not his name. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Lord. And Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. So... At the end of the day, you know, we're supposed to keep grinding and keep uh, showing these people that the Most High exists. One of the ways that we can prove that the Most High exists is by us doing this work because nobody else is going out there, you know, pushing this word as hard as the brothers that's in this truth. All right. Then another thing that, you know, to prove that the Most High exists is the things that we say, you know, uh, just because, you know, it might be a lot of unbelievers out there. That, that doesn't mean that prophecy is not going to happen. You know, just like I've uh, been saying for a long time that, you know, there's going to be a pestilence out here and there was going to be race wars and so forth and so on. Right. And now you starting to see those things. A lot of people actually starting to see these prophecies happening. And, you know, a lot of them are opening up their eyes, but, you know, they're not opening up their eyes in the right direction. You know, they're still uh, having their life within this world, especially these celebrities, you know. We really don't expect one of these celebrities to really come out of their world to follow the truth. You know, I don't expect that to happen at all. But at the same, at the end of the day, though, they know that they're Israelites. And why? How do they know that they're Israelites? Because of these videos, man. Just like the video that went uh, viral within a uh, Israelite world <laughs> yesterday. You know, uh, GMS upon precepts. He posted a video. You know, with the apostles speaking from that street teaching. And, uh, you know, they're speaking about what Apostle Zahar was speaking about how all these celebrities know uh, who they are. And one of the reasons why they know who they are is because they've been watching the videos, you know. And now you got people like Nick Cannon and uh, Ice Cube, uh, Cassidy, Nas, Kendrick Lamar, so forth and so on, who acknowledges that they're Israelites, right? But, you know, they're not doing the things that, that the Most High told them to do. They're still within the world, you know. So we have to be an example of how to be when you come into this truth. All right. So without further ado, man, let's get right into it. So let's get Matthew 10 and 31. This is Matthew chapter 10, verse 31. And it says, fear you not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. See that? So how do you confess? What do you? What does it mean that uh, when he says confess me before men? He's talking about going out there and doing what we're supposed to do, teaching this word, being bold with it too. You know, not being afraid, going out there and letting our people know what's going on. Like Isaiah 58 and 1 says, you know, cry not, spare, uh, spare not, spare not, cry aloud, you know, show my people their sins, you know, roughly paraphrasing, you know, that's what we're supposed to do, man. 
You're supposed to go out there and tell our people what they're doing wrong and tell our people what they're supposed to do to get right with you. How about show me how it's shot? You know, because at the end of the day, that's our job, man. That's what the most I put us here to do. We're uh, fulfilling our life. And that's one of the ways that we're making known that the Most High exists, man. Because there's not a lot of people who would actually gird up the gird up <laughs> Salakia that would gird up their loins to go and do this, man. You know, because you got to realize when you come into this truth, man, this is work. This is work, man. You got to sacrifice a lot of your time for this. You got to be serious about this. You know, you got to get into these scriptures and understand these breakdowns, understand these prophecies. And then you have to go teach these scriptures so then people can be warned and people can hopefully repent and come back as far as the Negroes, Latinos, the Native Americans go. All right. But at the end of the day, this is what we do. We confess our Lord and our power. We confess Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, you know, before men, you know, because at the end of the day, we're not um, keyboard prophets. <laughs> we're not just in the house that's doing videos and everything like that. No, man, we go out. Where everybody is walking, where, you know, life is being lived outside in the streets and the highways and the byways, man. So that's one of the things that, you know, the Lord told us to do. So we do that so we can prove to you and show you that things are happening within this earth, man. This is Matthew 5 and 14. It says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. See, when we go out there and do this work, we glorify our, our power. We glorify you. How about show me how shy, man? You know, we make him look good. We because we, we're that light, man. We're, we're shining before men right now because we're giving out this wisdom. We're teaching people this wisdom. Warning people about the prophecies that's getting ready to pass, you know, because these are the words of the Most High himself, man. These are his words. He's just using us to speak it. OK, so at the end of the day, we're letting our light shine before men so they can see our good works, because this is a good work. When you go out into the highways and the byways and teach, it's a good work. Like the scriptures say, if you run into this knowledge and you don't teach, you don't warn the people, you're going to have blood in your hands, according to Ezekiel. When you read the book of Ezekiel, it says that the Most High is going to require the blood on your hands because you had the warning, you had the wisdom, but you didn't tell people about it. So now you allow them to keep going off. You allow them to keep sinning. You allow them to just keep living the way that they were. You didn't give them the warning. So the blood is on your hands, man. All you got to do is when you come into this wisdom, you got to teach these scriptures, man. You got to tell people about it. All right. Like it says, man, if they come into this word or not come into this word, but if they walk past it, you know, and they, and they listen and everything like that, but they choose not to be a part of it. Hey, the blood is off of your hands now. You did your part. You know, this is not a thing where we force people into it. You know, this is a thing where we just speak the word and we just fish out the elect. Sooner or later, somebody is going to walk past and listen and come into the fold, man. And that's all we're looking for, man, because this is not a thing where we're trying to save everybody. You know, we're only looking for the elect of the nation of Israel right now. All right. So we let our light shine before men so we can glorify our power. Let's look that word up real quick. <laughs> Let's look that word up real quick, man. See what the definition of glorify is. It says to cause to be or treat as being more splendid. <laughs> excellent etc that would normally be considered to honor with praise admiration or admiration so like it or worship extol to make glorious invest with glory to praise the glory of it says god right there especially as an act of worship and so when we go out there and do this work we're worshiping our power we're honoring him we're praising him we're giving him all the admiration all right we're making him look good, man. He, this is what he wants. He wants his men to go out there and bring forth this word so he can uh, we can let everybody know that there's a, a better place than here um, in this wicked place called Babylon, which is America. All right. We're supposed to go out there and, and let make our Lord look good, man. You know, because because this is what we're looking for, because you got to remember within the kingdom of heaven, there won't be sin. 
there won't be anybody walking around following their own hearts. Because like the scriptures say, a heart deceiveth your, your own self, you know? There won't be anybody that's going to say that they're atheists or anything like that. Why? Because first of all, Yahweh Shah is going to be right here on earth ruling. Next to King David, the 12 apostles, and 144,000. All right? So it won't be none of that, man, because they're going to see the Lord and they're going to see the Israelites in power in the kingdom. So this is what we're bringing forth right now, man. We give you a glimpse of the men, the true men that's coming into this fold and pushing this word and bringing forth the word of Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shah, pushing the word of the kingdom, man. This is a, a, a example and a little glimpse of what the kingdom is going to be like, man. You're going to see men who's going to stand tall and bring forth this word, man. You know, Yahweh by Shemi Yahweh Shah is looking for that governing body. So we glorify our power, you know. We do what we're supposed to do because all of the glory and praises go to him, man. Everything, all of it. Like I said, we're not worthy of nothing, man. We give everything to our Lord, which is rightfully so, man. Rightfully so. So this is 2 Corinthians 8 and 16. It says, But thanks be to the Most High, which puts the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For indeed, he accepted the exhortation. But being more forward of his own accord, he went unto you. And we have sent with him the brother whose praise is in the gospel throughout all the churches. And not that only, but who was also chosen of the churches to travel with us with this grace, which is administered by us to the glory of the same Lord and declaration of your ready mind. Avoiding this, that no man should blame us in this abundance, which is administered by us, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. And we have sent with them our brother whom we oftentimes pr prove diligent in many things but now much more diligent upon the great confidence which i have in you the diligent is a, is a thing that you have to be man you have to go out there and prove to the lord that you you want to be a part of this you want to be in this man you know so you constantly gotta work 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 man verse 23 it says whether any do inquire of titus he is my partner and fellow helper concerning you or our brethren, but inquired, but be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Amashiach and Hawashai. Wherefore, show ye, show ye to them and before the churches the proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. And that's the name of this lesson, man. Be the proof that the Most High exists. Read verse 24 again. It says, Wherefore, show ye to them and before the churches. The proof of your love and of our boasting on your behalf. What is the proof of our love, man? Us doing this work, us learning these scriptures, us being on fire and not trying to be lukewarm or cold. You know, we understand that there's a better life that's coming for us. And we understand that destruction is coming as well. And we want we don't want to be a part of it. We want to be a part of salvation. And we already know what the love is, according to um John first John all right we know what the love is as far as uh loving the uh the heavenly father the way we that we do that is following these commandments statutes and laws so we're supposed to be proof of what those commandments which came from the most high so we are proof right now that the most high exists why because we're not ashamed to follow these scriptures we're not ashamed to follow the law we're not ashamed to rehearse the righteous acts we're not ashamed to go out there and show people that we have changed our life for what the scriptures say all right we go out there and we prove to everybody that we don't live like them all right somebody could walk them and be like man you, you talking about you don't eat pork you talking about you and do this you talking about you don't do that we'd be like no we do we follow the laws we follow the commandments we follow the statutes we come out here and teach how you gonna tell us what we are doing man you know we be around brothers all the time, man. Every time I go in the store, <laughs> every time I go in the store, I don't just shop like I used to when I was in the world, man, where you just go in the store and you just look at a um a certain item or whatever and you just get wild about the way the logo look or the way uh, that everything is presented and everything like that or the way that they uh word a certain item, you know. We don't just be like, ooh, that sounds good and just pick it up. Now, when we go in the store, what we do? We look at the back <laughs> to read the ingredients. <laughs> we like, do we got high fructose uh, corn syrup in it? 
Then we got yellow five in it, yellow six, red 40 in it, these dyes or whatever that's in it, you know? Cause we try to stay away from those things as much as possible, man. You know, we be like, man, we we ain't got time for all that. You know, we try to better ourselves. You know, and we definitely damn sure don't go with a pork or the shrimp or the crab or whatever it is is that. <laughs> we don't even get go into that section, man. If we gotta walk past it, guess what we do? We walk past it. We go straight to the beef section, straight to the turkey, the chicken, all of that, man. We change our lives because of what? The love that we have within our spirit that only Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has given us, man. So we're living proof right now that the Most High exists because he was like, look, you're supposed to live like this and they're doing it. What about you? Are you doing it? Or are you just being a hypocrite because you believe in Jesus? You believe in God? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what about you? You're not living proof right now, man. You're living proof of what? The devil. You're living proof of somebody who's just living according to the way that you believe is correct. And you're living proof of somebody that's going to get destroyed if you don't change your ways. This is Psalm 78 and 1. It says, give ear on my people. <laughs> Here it is. To my law. <laughs> give ear on my people. To my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children <laughs> Ooh, read this again man hold on hold on it says i will open my mouth in a parable i will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children showing to the generation to come the praises of the lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he had done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. There it goes again. It's only for Israel. Which he commanded our father that they should make known, make them known to their children. That the generations to come might know them. Even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children. That they might set their hope in the Most High. And not forget the works of the Most High but keep his commandments and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with the most high, steadfast with the most high, Salakia. So this is proof of us being within his glory, man. This is proof of us pushing his word and telling people to give right. Cause why? What it say right here, man? We do this and we hide it not from our children. It says we will not hide it from their children. So each generation that goes past can have what? The praises of the Lord. Establish the law of Jacob in the Lord. Generations to come might go and praise who? The Lord. <laughs> so when you do this, man, you are living proof because now each generation is feeling and living the same thing that you've been learning and teaching. Is that not proof? That the Most High exists? If we can do that, man? Okay, some people might say, well, you can do that with anything, man. All you got to do is teach your children the correct way or teach your children, you know, whatever you believe is important. You can't do that in this world, really, man. You know how many of our children come against our uh, the parents these days, man? You can't even discipline your children without going to jail. Okay? And then this world has taught people to just be free. This world has taught people to just live according to the way that they want to live. You, If you want to be a ninja turtle, you can be a ninja turtle. If you want to be a plant sexual where you have sex with plants in the dirt, you can be that, man. And guess what? The world has to accept you. <laughs> That's what this world pushes, man. And then you got to look at it like this, man. When we bring out this word, how many people... Just walk past or scoff. It's way more people that walk past and scoff than people that actually come into this. Okay? So at the end of the day, we do this so then each generation can have this and it can continue on. And the most I can continue getting his praises, which he rightfully deserves, man. Okay? This is what we're supposed to do. And this is what we're doing it for now because we know that uh, they're going to be a certain amount of people, meaning the elect, that's going to believe this and they're going to be saved, man. And guess what? 
since they believe in the Lord and they will prove they're going to be the proof that the Most High exists. Guess what? Though the elect is going to bring the people who didn't <laughs> want to come into this, man. We're going to bring you back. And guess what? You're going to be those children coming back in the next generation doing what? Giving praises to the Lord, honoring the Lord, following the commandments of the Lord. Being in the glory of the Lord. Why? Because the people that sacrifice in their time now and do what they're supposed to do, you know, believe that the Lord exists right now. And without the elect, guess what? There is no kingdom. There is no kingdom, man. If it wasn't for the elect, man, everything would just get uh, just be dead, man. Everything would just be dead. But the most High is going to save a small remnant. OK, and within that small remnant is going to flourish the kingdom of heaven with the children of Israel, man. So <laughs> so right now we have to be that proof that the most High exists. All right. We got to do that, man. So let's close it with this last scripture right here. Um, First Peter five and one. It says the elders which are among you, I exhort who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of the Most High, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Okay? Willingly. You see that word? Willingly? Meaning, when you wake up in the morning, you're supposed to be like, yep, I'm going to go teach the word. I'm going to go upload a video. I'm going to get my mind right to go out to these highways and these byways. That's how you're supposed to be, man. You ain't supposed to wake up and be like, huh. I got to read today. I got to do this. I got to do that. Damn, man. Can I just chill? No, man. You can't chill. The scripture is saying this is not our rest. <laughs> this is not our rest. You cannot chill. You're going to chill in the kingdom. Right now, it's time for you to work. So get your ass up and work. <laughs> Excuse my language. It says, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. See? Of a ready mind. We ain't doing this for money, man. We doing this for what? So we can... Uh, feed fish out the elect verse 3 it says neither as being lords over the most high's heritage but being ensembles to the flock and when the chief shepherd shall appear you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away so there you go man we're supposed to be ensembles to the flock meaning being examples to the flock being the the um uh the the uh ah, what's the word i'm looking for representation of the lord man there you go we're supposed to be the representation of the lord you know we are an example of what you're supposed to do when you actually believe in the heavenly father man we don't just be like we believe in the heavenly father and that's it you know let's get dumped in some some dirty christian water you know let's go to church in a building where the lord is not even present at <laughs> you know we don't do those simple things that people glorify in you know we glorify the real heavenly father. We glorify the real Lord, which is Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, man. We glorify them. All right. We, and we're being examples to the flock of how to be, which is what? Being the proof that the most high exists, man, because we're actually following his words, no matter what people think about us, man. And that's the point, because we already know at the end of the day, we're going to have a last laugh. When the two thirds come back in the kingdom, they're going to see us. They're going to remember us and they're going to be like, damn, I should have did what y'all did. You know, they're going to be shame faced, point blank, period. You know, but at the end of the day, they're going to be happy. You know, that that shame faceness. They're not going to have their hair down, their head down for long, you know, because uh, the kingdom of heaven is made for us. You know, it's, it's going to be made for Israel. You know, we're going to be on top, man. We're going to have the servants, the handmaids, the slaves, the concubines, the gold, the silver. The riches, you know, literally the earth and other planets, you know, the most I gonna give us everything, man. And, you know, they're going to be happy. But right now, man, we're being examples of how to be. And we're going to keep doing that until Yahweh Shai comes back. And even when he comes back, we're still going to be the examples of how to be, man, because we're going to be in those new bodies, man. We and we definitely gonna keep the law in. Definitely gonna keep it there of how to be of um, being an example to the flock, man. So at the end of the day. This is what we working for, man. So, yes, when we go and do this work and we, you know, believe in the Lord, man, we are proof that the most High exists, man, because the spirit is within us right now. All right. 
And we're, we're praying and fasting every day that the spirit stays upon us. We don't want this spirit to leave us. We want this spirit, this, this spirit to stay within us so we can make it, man. All right. So at the end of the day, keep doing what you got to do. And Lord willing, man, we'll be all right. So I hope this was edifying, man. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakak Wadash, double honor to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aquat that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.